everyone, my name is Anne, uh, Anne Wright. I am the Education Director at Artisans Asylum. So I assume by now you guys know what Artisans Asylum is. You've had a little bit of an experience with it. Um, so just a little more information. So we're a 40,000 square foot maker space over in Union Square. Um, we have about 160 artist studios, 14 different shops, um, about 40 classes a month, uh, and we serve, gosh, we have, I think, over 400 members, and then of those 40 classes, we probably have two or 300 people um, coming in for classes, plus tours twice a day. So lots of people coming into our space. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, so we're delighted to be here at Vox Pop today. Um, you guys have gotten a little introduction to some of the uh, makers in our space. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, hear from them a little bit more about themselves. Um, OK, so makers, here's some questions for you guys that you get to answer. Um, so first of all, I want to hear your name. Um, what your sort of background is, um, then maybe a question about how you got involved with Artisans Asylum, uh, what project was sort of your first project, or what project has been your most exciting project, um, and how this community of learners has sort of affected or changed your thinking or your product or your design. Is that too many questions? You guys think you can get it? So how you got started, favorite project, uh, how Artisans has sort of affected you as a person, you as a business. Sound good? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of, we'll just kind of quickly go around, maybe five minutes each, um, and that way we can hear from everyone. So, you are closest to me, so I'm gonna start with you, Alex. I am Alex Mattinger. I have been at the asylum for seven, six, seven months now. Uh, my background is in mechanical engineering, and I'm self-taught in electrical engineering, computer science, and biomechatronics, largely towards uh, the creation of prosthetic limbs. But that was not my first project at the asylum. It was a little different. I had been wanting to develop a little wireless gadget for some time. And I came in on the Wednesday nights, or the open circuit night, and I actually met Mike here, who uh, warmly welcomed me. And I said, Mike, I got this problem. I've, been, I've hit this technical wall. And he said, come with me. I know exactly who to. And within minutes of walking in the space, he was whisking me away to someone who had already overcome that problem. And that is, that is a common theme. It's, it's a community more than, than just a space to work or a place to access tools. It's a place where people share. They're generous. They want to help. And it's a place to collaborate. So I would say, honestly, you, you asked what like, the most exciting project is. It's almost like being at Artisans is its own project. It's, it's a little bit of a, a quirky answer, but I've started to meet people and think of new ways of collaborating that I wouldn't have in any space like Artisans. So excited to see who else I get to meet and what else we get to build. Thank you. Does that, anyone have any questions for Alex? OK. Well, hi, my name is Alana Krepshin, and I make all the jewelry on this table. I also run the jewelry studio at the asylum and teach some classes. I've been a member for about three years. I came in just looking for a space to make my work. I wasn't necessarily thinking about a new project at the time. But since working there, I've learned a lot of new techniques that have really taken my jewelry in a totally different direction, which has been really exciting. I also never thought I wanted to teach before coming to the asylum. And I've discovered that I actually like it a lot. And I've learned a lot from the process of figuring out what I'm going to teach and from the questions that I get and just from interacting with the students. And I enjoy seeing what they come up with and how different it is from each other from the same project. Is there a question? What's the most exciting project? Um, I've really enjoyed learning how to work with titanium, both welding it and anodizing it. So I'm just gonna show a necklace, which is one of my newest pieces, that's been a challenge and has taken me a long time, but I've really enjoyed working on it. All right, any questions for Alana? All right, we'll move on. Mike, it's all you. Uh, my name is Mike Beach, um, and I. 
uh, help support the electronic shop that we have at, at Artisans. I think Alex stole some of the ideas I had of a collaboration is the thing that I find the most interesting at Artisans. Um, I've been at Artisans about coming up on five years now. Um, I run my small business as a consulting engineer, helping people make circuit boards um, and doing other electronic designs and doing some of the beginning electronics classes. We have little, little blinky lights and little, uh, other little gadgets that we do in the classes. I think the Wednesday hacker nights in the, you know, are one of the most fun, you know, even, even when I'm exhausted, it just seems like that's just a fabulous energizing time with whatever is going on there. Um, there is in the weird interconnectedness, the Alana teaches how to do um, spot welding in the jewelry shop right next door to the electronic shop. And well, I've used the spot welder for rebuilding battery packs and for the um, somewhat bizarre purpose of making little tiny ball bearings fit onto stainless steel knitting needles so that some orthopedic surgeons could do some tests for devices to um, measure how good your ankle is healing. They were This woman who came in wanted to use an Arduino to do this, but it turned out that it needed the jewelry shop. So this is the kind of a thing of like weird sliding from one orbit to another. Um, there's, there's a historical precedent to this from the uh, temporary buildings at MIT over building 20 that are now some fancy building that's been replaced. But the notion that things are a little funky and that you can still collaborate and you know get things to happen. I mean, whatever has to happen, happens. <laughs> well, so a funny story that I'll share about the circuit hacking night is prior to me coming on board at Artisans Asylum, um, I have a small business and I do uh, work in chocolate. And I had my first uh, class and uh, experience and my machine broke in the middle of it. So I had to, you know, figure something else out for the class. And I brought the machine to Artisans Asylum. Um, I'd heard about this circuit hacking night. Um, and I brought my machine in, and everyone was really excited because they hadn't seen a chocolate tempering machine before. And I was like, I don't, it, 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 I think there's some stuff inside, and it broke. Um, and so Mike and Andrew um, and a whole other community of learners um, al allowed me to unscrew this machine that I had a lot of trepidation over because it's a very expensive machine, um, open it up, see the inner workings, look at the circuit board. Um, I am sad to say that we did not fix my machine that night. <laughs> I did, we actually set something on fire, though. Something, something blew up. Something went poof. Something went poof. Um, there was a little singeing of some wires, and then I had to send it off to the, the company, and I, they I actually. I think there was a little bit of like, is it under warranty? Yep, they, yep, they, that was. Even though so I sent it off to the company, and they fixed it for $25, so it was fine. But it was my first experience. Um, I am not a techie in any way, shape, or form. I am more on the performance art sides of things. Um, to be able to bring in something, you know, from basically my kitchen um, and open it up and learn all of these new experiences. So. Come check out our hack, uh, circuit hacking night. Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8.30? Six, at 6 to 8. 6 to 8. I'm usually there till 9. Mm, come you earlier. You stay later. Be fixed and that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we fix things. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just, you learn a lot. All right. So my name's Richard. Um, I've been a member of the asylum uh, for about four years. I started off uh, being a consultant, I was retired. Um, I then started to design a, a particular spectrometer that I had uh, always wanted to build in my life uh, because uh, that's what I used to work on. Um, and then I got into robotics and then I got into education and teaching. And I try and do all these things together um, somewhat successfully some days and not in other days because the one thing about the asylum is it's the most social place on the on, uh, uh, space on the whole planet I think you know you walk in in the morning and you might have a plan of what you're going to do and by the end of the day you've done like 10 different things and they but they weren't on the list and I enjoy that um, and I I have grandchildren, so I, you know, I'm building some of these robots so I can show my grandkids, um, and we have a lot of fun there. 
and I, I hope we continue to. And, and I certainly uh, collaborate a lot with, with Mike, who has been a wonderful mentor in many ways. So. Um, just for some context here, um, so Artisans Asylum, at least on the education side, has been mostly adult education up until uh, more recently, and I just want to give a shout out to uh, Richard and Mike here who ran our first uh, parent-child co-led teaching session um, where the kids got to make these uh, um, dragon robots. Uh, so we hope to be offering um, some more youth program. We just launched a family membership. so two guardians and up to four children um, can come. You can use the space kind of like your, um, your garage. Build some things, try some things out. Hopefully don't blow anything up, but uh, maybe just small, small things to blow up. Hi, I'm uh, Ross Hoser. I am uh, an ex-marketing uh, guy and in uh, wealth management. I uh, left a couple of years ago and I just started to do some of my crafting. I was doing home crafting and getting into glass etching and an old colleague of mine uh, saw what I was doing and said how about a hundred of those with my logo on them and there was no way that I was going to be able to do that at home and so I started to explore things like laser capabilities and that's how I found my home at Artisans Asylum and everything from there has been pretty organic. Uh, I think I was inspired, I was doing some glass work but I was inspired by the people around me and all of the cutting that they were doing on the laser, and I decided that I wanted to start fabricating from scratch, and with that, I wound up uh, getting into lanterns and lamps, and in parallel with all of that, I started to think of myself as artisan, as entrepreneur, and started to do things like how do you go to open markets, and how do you sell, and how do you market all of these types of things, and it's just been evolving and evolving. Um, to the point where I now uh, do fashion accessories for men, I call it fashion accessories that captivate, as well as a line of Judaica work. They don't necessarily mesh very well, um, but I figured out the branding to bring them together, and I've started to do some wholesaling. So it's been a, a big uh, journey for me. The thing that's been amazing about Artisans Asylum is just number one, by definition of a maker space, you get to experience uh, all of the capabilities that you need by way of being a member. So things like lasers and wood shops and things like that. But I would say more importantly, and Anne, you asked this question earlier about the types of things that you wind up learning. Um, yes, I knew how to craft, um, but I didn't really know things around, you know, how do you, how do you really uh, make 10 of these at a time, you know, what's the production uh, of all of this and how do you gain efficiencies and there's uh, Sarah who started to work with me, uh, a member of ours, uh, is masterful at thinking through all of those things. I just really learned how to make a better product and we wound up making design changes as a result of some of the collaboration and I, I learned how to just listen and ask and in fact I went home one night and I said to my older son, I said, it occurred to me that if you're going to work with anybody, make sure that they can teach you something. So as you think that you know it all is the danger, but at Artisans, there's so many people who have a lot of wisdom, and uh, if you step back and take a pause and ask for, or not even ask for guidance, but allow them to share their perspectives, um, you wind up learning a lot. So it's been a, uh, an amazing place, and I uh, would not be able to do what I do if it were not for Artisans Asylum. And, and do you want to tell them what award you just won? Really? You're, that's a good tee up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I had my first wholesale show. I was down in, the, uh, in Philadelphia. It's the Philadelphia Gift Show, and I was... Uh, showing my uh, bow ties and, and my men's fashion accessories uh, as well as some of my other work. And uh, the day before the show was ending, the organizers came up to me and said that the buyers uh, have uh, awarded you the best new product of 2019. And it was, uh, it was my Sally Field moment. Anybody references that they like me, they really like me. Uh, it was really exciting, considering that was my first outing, and I got a chance to really learn a lot and meet some uh, fun and interesting people. And it was, uh, it, it, it gave me a, a spring, in, spring in my step, yeah. 
All right, and last but not least, James. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is James Bogosian. I am, or my training is in neurobiology and chemistry. I've been working at the Artisans Asylum for about a year and a half. Originally, I came in looking to have some vinyls cut, and nobody could cut them. I, so I got an email from someone. I reached out to our Have It Made mailing list, which is actually wonderful. So if you ever need anything made, fabricated, that sort of thing, uh, you can send an email. It goes out to most of our members, and anyone that can do it can do it. So, anywho, uh, I wound up having someone contact me saying they could laser cut me a stencil, and at the time I said, what the heck is a laser cutter? Uh, went in there, and as soon as I started play, you know, seeing them actually work, my jaw hit the floor, and I was in love. Since then, I uh, have started doing a bunch of in independent contracting, some consulting work, uh, a lot of laser cutting, 3D printing, uh, fabrication of various different things. Uh, probably my favorite project recently would have been uh, printing some camera mounts for a submersible camera. It's going down to about 4,500 meters on the vessel that, <coughs> excuse me, on the vessel that discovered the Titanic, apparently. Uh, yeah, and the thing I like most about the asylum is just the sheer volume of eclectic tastes and styles and everything, you know, whether it's a ping pong ball launcher going through a can uh, on a random Friday night to just the general social aspect of it. Everybody's really supportive and very excited about what they're doing and what everyone else is doing. It's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. Okay. All right, so we have a few minutes for questions. Um, anyone have any questions about artisans or anything from one of our makers here? We've told you all of the information. Okay, um, well, I will sort of close here then. Thank you all, uh, makers, for uh, talking to us a little bit about um, what it is that you love about your work and Artisans Asylum. Um, for those in the audience, uh, we encourage you to come by to Artisans at any time. We do tours twice a day at 2 and at 8 p.m. That changes a little bit, I think, on Sundays, but that's fine. Um, check out our website. Um, come check out our space. You can see a little bit more about what all of these makers are talking about. The community of learning that um, occurs there is just incredibly unique um, for the Boston area um, and such an asset um, to this community. So please, come on by. Thank you.